What is the purest principle of the Cafe Racer project? Most people will say, it is taking a regular motorcycle down to its lightest and most powerful state possible. Although this is a definition accepted by most, it doesn't mean it always has to be that way. Because it is not easy. And it requires a very generous budget. But, from time to time, we are lucky enough to find something, on such an extraordinary level. And this is what you are going to see today. Probably one of the most purest cafe racer projects, based on a K-series machine. Welcome to Racer TV. And here it is. A pure and stunning BMW Cafe Racer in all its glory. Most people will say, it looks powerful. And on this particular case, if it looks powerful, that is because it really is. Something around 130 horses. Is this an easy project? Absolutely not. Although in this curious sequence, it might seem like it is. In fact, the disassembling process alone seems already complicated enough. But let's go to the introductions. This machine was built by Tim Summer, founder of the BMW parts specialist Power Brick, located in Holland. The project was baptized Vigilance. It is based on a 1994 BMW K1100 RS. Which means the transformation is obviously radical. Aesthetically, it became very aggressive, with quite a sharp stance. There are several factors contributing for this overall look. But before we get to that, Allow me to explain what this project has, that no other ever had. All over the world, there is a relatively large group of enthusiasts, who appreciate custom projects, based on BMW motorcycles. And why? Because both the R-Series and the K-Series, have a unique and very own personality, which we can't find on any other motorcycle. Unfortunately, they also have a big obstacle, which frustrates a lot of people. The mono swing arm. For some, the fact of having a drive shaft transmission, might be like a point in favor. But from a customization point of view, it makes things very hard. Because it limits, any rear wheel changes. Especially, when we want to mount a wider tire. And this is precisely the point, in which this BMW, is so innovative. This, has to be the widest tire I have ever seen, on a K-Series BMW. The usual size on most bikes from the K-Series, is 160, although it can reach 170, on some versions. But this one, goes far beyond that. The big question is, how did him do it? I researched several articles about this project, and the only thing said about it, is that the swing arm, was extended 15 millimeters. But I think something is missing here. If you check this transition, you will see that the 15 millimeters look more like 50. It is quite understandable that Tim might want to keep this modification a secret. And so the only thing I can do is to give you my best guess. 
I think this swing arm was made by joining several sections from different motorcycles. If this is true, I take my hat off for Tim's work. But if my guess is wrong, I also congratulate Tim for finding a solution to fit such a big tire on this motorcycle. I admit that viewed from the side, the rear wheel looks a bit distant from the engine. But when seen in perspective, it just looks staggering. In fact, this BMW is impressive from the outside to the inside. As I said earlier, the engine was upgraded, which means it now has a very respectable 130 horses of power. But it wasn't just the engine that got a steroids treatment. The wheels, brakes, and suspensions were not forgotten to handle the 30 horsepower increment. For obvious reasons, Tim couldn't help but use some items from Power Bricks in house catalog. If you check his website, you will find several variations of these items, not only for the K series, but also for BMW's R series. You can find this website's link on this video description box. In what concerns to the aesthetics, I think Tim was very insightful on some of the adopted solutions. Notice how the headlight cover is perfectly aligned with the top surface of the fuel tank. This creates the illusion as if both parts were only one. But the rear section is even more interesting. Look how clean and simple it is. The design of the new subframe is very well done. Somehow, it seems to fit perfectly with everything else. Although the end of the subframe's structure looks a bit unfinished, when we see it from this angle, only then we find the genius of these lines. With this choice, Tim not only got a good and discreet location for the turn signals, but also a nice location to place the box for the electrical system. I know that putting a black box under the seat is nothing new. But this pointy format is what makes the difference. Because from certain angles, it helps to make this box almost invisible. Among all the projects I've ever encountered with the K-Series, this one is visually one of the strongest and most muscular I've ever seen. Thank you for watching Racer TV. And as always, I hope to see you on the next video.